Yeah, good morning from me too. Um, my name is Franz Liebke. I'm 21, a student, IT systems engineering, which is a fancy name for computer science, in Potsdam, Germany. It's right next to Berlin. Yeah, and I'm going to talk about um, FlexBB, which is an open source PHP form software. Looks like this. Um, yeah, it's used for, I mean, even if it's not uh, one of the most popular form scripts out there, it's used for uh, quite a few Linux distribution community forums, and its predecessor, PanBB, was used for the Facebook developer forums until they shut those down. So, yeah, I don't know if you've ever searched for, uh, seriously searched for a form software, you might have come across it. Does anybody here know it? Okay. Very good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's talk about the history first for a few few minutes. Um, it was founded in two. Uh, 2003, created by a guy named Rickard Anderson, um, yeah, who created it because none of the existing solutions fit his concept of a form, <laughs> which seems to be a common reason for um, starting open source projects in ways, but for him it was kind of special because uh, the solutions he found, um, they had too many features. And yeah, he, he, focused, he tried to create a form that um, only brought the the very essential for, uh, features a forum needs and leave out some of the, you know, bliss and, and feature creep some of the other forums had in his opinion. So for example, um, FlexBB and PunBB didn't have um, a private messaging system, things that don't really fit into a forum, in our opinion. Yeah, so um, the origin of FlexBB is PunBB. Um, FlexBB, the, the developers of PunBB forked in 2008 after the creator left the project and after it was uh, the rights to, to PunBB was sold to a company and they had made some decision, decision, uh, decisions that the community didn't mm -hmm. like. So it was forked and at that point they had a, an almost complete version 1.3 which um, had the main feature of being extensible, easily extensible with one click until then. That was done via modifications, which were essentially, which essentially meant hacking the source code by hand. Usually, those modifications were packed up with really simple step-by-step -step instructions, so somewhat idiot-proof or <laughs> user-friendly, if you will. Um, yeah, but one-click extensions were much better, of course. It was allowed you to to add features, etc., without touching the core. It was pretty. Uh, that was a pretty big step forward at that point. So the idea was really to provide a really lightweight and small uh, forum core, which fit our concept, and then extensions allowed everybody to, to add the features they wanted if they needed them, but really create their own, their very own forum. Yeah, to make a long story short, that didn't work out. Uh, 1.3 never got into a real final uh, mode. It's yeah still a legacy version, and we're back to the old system with with modifications and yeah only maintenance and, and small feature releases from time to time yeah to be honest that probably wasn't too good for our user base and we <laughs> we still have enough but yeah it's it drove some of them away um there are many changes of directions so yeah but why did the extension system never happen first of all there were some problems regarding the implementations even though it allowed you to literally drop code in at certain places um, via hooks. That was done with things like eval, which is <laughs> not the best solution for many problems, or probably not a solution for any problems, but that's another discussion. <laughs> um, yeah, and also the rest of the code um, has some, regarding clean code, uh, it could probably be better. Um, mostly it has problems like no separation of concerns. There's presentation logic and business logic all mixed throughout all the files. Um, there's global vo variables all over the place. Uh, barely any classes and when we use them we don't use inheritance, although we should have. Um, things like that. I don't want to bash the current code because it's really, I mean, uh, I have a huge respect for the creator and the former developers, and it, it surely has a huge advantage too, which helped me personally too. When I, when I, I, I literally uh, learned PHP and SQL from from looking at the source code of PunBB and FlexBB, so it was really easy to dive in. 
This was the first question I asked at the PumBB support forums. Now I'm lead developer. <laughs> um, yeah, that's just uh, the beauty in my eyes that everybody was able to dive in quickly and find things where when they wanted to change things and make the changes easily themselves in just a few minutes. Yeah, but we have plans too. And obviously now I've heard about uh, what things that are proper. I've learned things about object orientation and design patterns, things that are proper and not proper. And so we want to obviously do that in the, in the next version of FlexBB2. Okay, so let's talk about the goals first. Um, I didn't explain the name yet. It's supposed to be fast, lightweight, user-friendly, and extensible. We're pretty good in the, on the fast and lightweight part, but, and, and user-friendly, I'd say <laughs> it's okay, but the extensibility has always been more of a dream than a, than a real feature <laughs> until now. So let's talk about the goals we have for 2.0. Obviously, I don't need to say that again. It's the one-click extension system. Um, it's supposed to not only allow you to, to, to plug in code at different pieces of the source code, but you're supposed to allow, uh, you're supposed to be able to, things, to do things like replacing core classes, extending core classes, etc. And there's lots of PHP magic which, uh, which helps with doing that stuff, but it's still a challenge and we are currently yeah, planning and experimenting how to do things like that. Next, we want a, a nice API, um, like basically encapsulating the, the axes of the data so that nobody who writes extensions or custom integrations has to know what our database layout looks like. Talking about the database, the adapter itself needs a, is in dire need of an upgrade and yeah, we want to make queries extensible so that yeah, extensions can just request additional data, etc. I've talked about separation of concerns. A template system is part of that. Um, MVC, etc. So that's that's also going to make styling easier or allow for more 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 fancy things when creating custom styles for the forms. Yeah, and then lots of features, of course. We had lots of features where we just noticed that things had to be better. For example, the parser, the search engine, tracking of read and unread topics, permissions, that's things we're working on, and pretty URLs, which is easy to do these days and which users have always wanted. Yeah, we want to create an importer tool for other form softwares and old, old versions of our software. We already have a tool like that, but we want to integrate it with our installer to make that easier for, for users. Then usability, it's, it's part of the name, as I said, and especially in the admin panel, there's, there are things that can be improved, like want to do in-place editing of more, or more, more contextual editing of things like forms and categories. There, there are lots of, there's lots of room for improvement, and we're still investigating what's best. Then anti-spam stuff, that's really a problem because it's, it's hard or I would say nearly impossible to find a solution that fits everybody. And that's actually where I think that our extension system really fits our philosophy so well. Um, that since we have no solution for everybody, we just provide the lightweight core and then have additional extensions that can combine by users in the way they want their form to be. Okay, so when we're talking about implementation, we first um, wanted to do an incremental approach, take the current code base and by refactoring put a new architecture in there and make use of new components. Um, we have already created some of those for database and templating, etc. And we, the idea was to benefit from the existing code for, for all the features we had so that we didn't have to recreate that. What we realized later that that meant essentially recreating an, an entire framework by ourselves, and it turns out we were a little bit overwhelmed with that task. Um, so we did another one of those dreaded turnarounds, which the community also didn't like, but now we are <laughs> busy going forward and using a new framework, a relatively new framework in the PHP world, which is called Laravel. It's pretty awesome. I recommend checking it out. Um, the, the almost finished new version 4 
It just combines uh, very, very readable code with a very modular and decoupled code base that is also well tested and still has a really, really nice interface for the developer. This is example code for, yeah, it just, it just shows how to do validation and then, and then redirect in a typical controller that, a controller code that, um, that validates a form, et cetera, um, handles a post request. So it's just very readable and nice for developers. So the idea is to have a core package, which is a package for Laravel, which means it can easily be integrated with other Laravel sites and then also ship a distributable version, a standalone version that can be installed with Laravel or already prepackaged. Okay, so a framework, of course, brings a lot of overhead with it, and that has been um, a source of many questions from the community. One of those was um, about the size of Laravel, which is a couple megabytes, but really, um, the size of the files itself doesn't really matter. I, from my opinion, it, um, disk space is, uh, is available abundantly, and we, suppose, uh, we, we try to be lightweight about the features, not about the size of the package. Um, that's more important, in my opinion. On the other hand, of course, there's still that framework overhead, um, and that was, of course, the benefit of the old code base, which really had nothing more than needed but at the same time, I think that, especially with our history, um, we have to make compromises between development time, which Laravel allows us to be much, uh, but much smaller, and performance. Yeah. Also, when talking about Laravel, it, it allows us to do some things that we weren't able to do before, like easily putting in memcache, uh, for caching, things like that. So we can actually increase perf increase performance in areas that we weren't able to do so before. Yeah, and then also, if we have less features and if we have less database queries, that's of course going to be a more important um, source of of performance improvements than than you know micro optimizations in the framework. Okay, so things we're working on right now are as the so-called alpha two versions before we started working on 2.0, we created a detailed roadmap with <laughs> lots of steps. One of them is alpha 2. We're currently working on the admin panel so that we finally have something nice to look at, uh, to show to the community. Yeah, and especially permissions, we are recreating that system. Yeah, and of course, we are interested in help too. If, if anybody of you is interested, the code is on GitHub and can be yeah, just cloned and then um, we use Composer, the new PHP dependency management tool, to install the framework and all other dependencies. Yeah, so we are short on many things, de developer-wise, but especially on designers. So, if you're willing to lend a hand with that, that would be awesome. Yeah. Lastly, I want to close with some uh, le lessons I have learned um, uh, during the last few years that we could have done better to to increase community engagement, which I think is it's really important in my eyes. It's more important to to yeah take to maybe take um, ten ten uh, users and take each of them one step further uh, closer to contributing to the project on the level they're at than getting one guy and getting them to the same level of understanding the code that I am at or that other team members are at. So and I've these are mostly things that I have. I think I realized uh, we were not as good at uh, the last for the last few years. So it's not my wisdom. It's just what's lacking, probably. So one of that is that just what I said, inviting community members to contribute each at their level, and yeah, getting involved. Pages is pretty important for 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 open source projects. We already have that, but just list. I, I think it's a good thing to have a have a page that just lists all the things that can be done from not just bug reporting, but posting a solution to helping other users when finding a problem, adding that to the docu documentation, etc. There's so much that can be done. Then raising excitement is pretty 
pretty good just whether it's about new features that are coming, screenshots, things that other community members have done that can yeah, just kind of create a sense of identity and community for for the community. And last, the documentation, especially code documentation, which is not something I've been too good at and which is yeah, just has to be added to to allow new developers to dive in more easily. Okay, I guess I should get to work then. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Uh -huh.